Logistics is struggling. Supply chain is messed up. Ships are stuck at ports. Packages are having multi-day delays. We're maxing out the infrastructure down here, and people need reliable shipping more than ever. Autonomous aircraft will enable the third dimension to be used for shipping way more than it can be today. At Elroy Air, we're building an autonomous vertical takeoff and landing system that can deliver about 300 pounds of cargo over a 300 mile range. I think it's important to note that the Chaparral and its vertical takeoff and landing capability, along with the fact that it's unmanned and fully autonomous, does support an entire ecosystem of agile and advanced logistics. So ship to ship, rural transport and rural delivery, um, and so much more. We designed the aircraft to cost a fraction per delivery than it would a typical helicopter or even a fixed wing aircraft that you're currently used today. The vehicle that we're designing uh, and have made uses less fuel per mission, doesn't have the same type of operating costs. You do not need a pilot to fly it. Uh, it is not limited by things like rough seas. It's not limited by uh, impassable roads. Uh, all it needs is a landing pad. Unmanned or automated cargo aircraft integrating into our national airspace is really essential and the possibilities are, are quite endless. As part of our collaboration with Elroy Air, NASA is really looking forward to understanding the unmanned logistics use case. We have this amazing opportunity right now when the enabling technology is here, it's within reach, we can build the canonical example of what a big delivery drone can be. We also have the team with the right background to do this and customers who are ready to use Chaparral systems. It's an amazing moment where all this is possible and we can be the first to do it well. The Chaparral was designed with a broad set of customers and application areas in cargo delivery in mind. We are using a composite airframe on the Chaparral. Composite airframes are a key enabler for this type of aircraft in that they are extremely lightweight and stiff. Due to the location of the different propulsors, stiffness is a key concern on this type of vehicle. The broad principle that we've used for the design of the avionics system is to be able to tolerate faults and to ensure that no single component or single failure mode would lead to a loss of aircraft or an unacceptably dangerous or risky situation. The hybrid powertrain system on the Chaparral incorporates a fully electric set of propulsion motors and servo actuators. Those are powered by a redundant set of battery packs. Those battery packs and the actuators are also supplied with a gas turbine-based electrical generator. The, the fact that we have eight motors for vertical lift and four for forward propulsion makes the system more fault tolerant in the sense that if there is a failure or a malfunction in one of those propulsion system elements, the aircraft is still safely flyable from anywhere in the flight envelope. When you look at the Chaparral aircraft and you're standing in front of it, it's easy to think that all the development of the aircraft lays within the confines of the physical aircraft itself. But in fact, there have been years of testing, of analysis, of design, of experimentation that have led to all of the things that go into the aircraft to mitigate the risk to the maximum extent that we can. As a result of going from two-day to same-day shipping to even two-hour delivery, it's putting a strain on all of the infrastructure and all the modalities out there. We're excited about what we're building because it is decoupled from infrastructure. That means no airports, no roadways. You can go from any point to another point and still be able to hit your goals.
Now is the moment to build the chaparral because we're at a inflection point where the you know, access to and the price points for um, commodity components like motors and sensors and lightweight compute has hit this, this point where they can be brought together to make these systems affordably. Even a decade ago, this wouldn't you wouldn't even be able to, to fathom that uh, you'd be able to do a system of this size like we're doing at Elroy Air. The primary markets that end up being the most interested in the system that we're building are the commercial markets, so express logistics, healthcare, defense, and the humanitarian organizations all over the world that are aiming to get essential goods to vulnerable communities. My name is Stephen Lyons. I'm the Chief Development Officer at Air Logistics. AIR is a humanitarian logistics and transportation group. Uh, we were formed over 20 years ago and operate mainly with the aid agencies, such as the UN and the World Food Programme. We provide a wide range of services, which includes cargo and passenger transportation, peacekeeping support, medevac, search and rescue, and we also do firefighting. We believe that moving to unmanned aerial cargo vehicles or cargo UAVs uh, will make a huge difference to our cost structure and the risk profile of our operations. We fly difficult terrain and difficult conditions. Uh, there simply hasn't been a UAV with the type of capabilities that the Chaparral has. The Chaparral is a quantum leap in terms of load carrying and range over existing cargo UAVs. We've learned so much uh, from our relationships with customers and have found that there are many use cases in a variety of industries. But if there were one use case that I would highlight, it would be the express delivery of supplies and goods uh, for humanitarian aid applications. And I'd say that you know, our team is really proud that we have the potential to put the chaparral in positions to serve you know, vulnerable communities in hard to reach locations. I'm Jonathan Ornstein. I'm the chairman and chief executive officer of FESA Airlines. There's just a huge movement right now and that is really changing the face of aviation in terms of environmentally friendly, hybrid electric, electric aircraft. When we talk about pain points that Chaparral can address, I mean, first and foremost, in my mind, is the pilot shortage and the fact that uh, there's going to be a continued growth in the industry uh, and we're going to be short pilots and autonomous flight is going to address that very big issue. I, I think one of the reasons why this is a moment to deploy a system like Chaparral is that the market really requires it. We're not even creating a market. We are answering a demand that exists in the market today that is currently unanswered. I am Nathan Diller. United States Air Force, the director of AppWorks. One of the key objectives of Agility Prime is accelerate learning. We've been able to get insights into designs, get insights into future use cases. And especially because these are new technologies with electrification, particularly the hybridization work that's happening, uh, some of the robotics, uh, and logistics modularity. It has given the Air Force through Agility Prime an opportunity for very rapid learning in ways that otherwise might have uh, taken decades at a higher cost for the taxpayer. We're seeing a transition in strategy amongst all the branches of the service, and but particularly the Air Force. Unmanned aircraft systems uh, over the past 20 years have become more and more important to the Department of Defense because they realize that it significantly reduces risk to human life. And secondly, more times than not, those systems are uh, lower cost uh, to purchase and to operate. I think the success for everyone would be an entirely new era of aerospace, of low cost democratized aviation that is able to move personnel and products around. For us in AppWorks, it's just phenomenal have a chance to work with the startup companies out there, uh, the, the folks that are working in those companies, really building things every day. 
the one characteristic that I would say that all of our employees share is that they're excited about what we're building and they believe in the future of the business. We, we can create a lot of positive change through our work, um, through the team that we build. Aerospace is really an industry that has struggled with uh, diversity on, on the staff level. I think, you know, I've heard some stories from our teammates of going to conferences and being the only person who looks the way they do. Um, and I really see the opportunity to prove that the greater the diversity, the greater the problem solving ability of the organization. Elroy Air is a team of brilliant, kind, dedicated experts in aerospace, logistics, and robotics, all working together to improve the speed and the reach of express shipping. When I look ahead to a success scenario, Elroy Air will enable express logistics to more than a billion people worldwide, both in routine and times of crisis. Our systems will be known as the autonomous pickup trucks of the sky, setting the industry standard and we'll be operating thousands of flights per day with no risk to pilots, with autonomy that is so reliable it's boring. We know that logistics is the lifeblood of civilization, and if we're able to be any part of that solution and being able to bridge that gap, I think that we'll be able to make the world a little bit better.